Hello everyone, this is Controversial Centipede and welcome to episode 18 of the Wigan Athletic Career Mode. Now, before I get into this episode, a quick little word that this is a post-commentary episode. I think it's the first one I've done and there is a massive reason for this. And with live commentary, this episode reached an hour and 15 minutes in length. So, yeah, 75 minutes long. That is well too long for a YouTube video for a FIFA 18 career mode. And to be honest, it was just not going to work. I think I might have cut it down to about 50 minutes. But when I did that, the audio didn't make sense in parts. And it just was too long for one episode. So what I did was cut all the audio out, edit it down even further, cut out some random stuff, random talking moments. And I said, I'm going to make it a 32 minutes, I think, in length post commentary video. And the reason why the episode was so long is because it is the January transfer window and it's the month of January. Now in the championship, not only is January good for bringing in players, bolstering your squad, getting rid of players, but you also have a lot of games and some cup games as well. So crucial games and also a crucial time for the rest of the season because not only are you trying to get those games won and keep in a good position, but you're also trying to get the rest of your season sorted out. So you know, a lot of stuff went on, so I managed to cut it down as best I could. You might miss out a few highlights, but they weren't great highlights, so don't worry too much about it. And what you've been seeing on screen is the youth report and the youth squad. So we signed up a few people, got rid of a few people. Nothing amazing from Australia, but at the same time, some good players like Alfie Jackson and Cameron Lee, a left back and a right mid, looking like they could be future first team players for us. I mean, we've done such a good job with our youth academy. We've got Cameron Harris, Jordan Turner, and also we've got uh, Dominic White, who all came through the Youth Academy, all playing regular football. And then we decided to go ahead and sign ourselves a keeper, and Darren Randolph was the choice for us, because Archer and Soriano combined, they'll be a cracking keeper, but apart, they are shit. Soriano's too small, can't save anything, and Archer just makes well too many mistakes. So I thought, we'll trade Archer and a bit of money for Randolph, and we managed to sign him from Birmingham. You can see there, not costing us that much in wages either, so saving a bit of money because Archer was quite expensive. But it did cost us a fair bit to bring him in. But just a little point on Randolph. Last season for West Ham, he was outstanding. Yet West Ham decided to sell him and loan in Joe Hurt. Yeah, and they play Joe Hurt and he's shit. And then they play Adrian, they do better. It's weird. Don't, I, don't, I don't know, personally, it's weird and it doesn't make any sense at all. But yeah, we got Randolph now at Wigan. Middlesbrough bought him. Good purchase for Middlesbrough in real life. But after our second season, halfway through our second season, we've signed Randolph. And I think he'll be good for the future. Once Harris gets a bit better, he will replace him. But for now, Randolph will be a quality keeper for us in goal. And then, back on with this match now you're watching. It's against Brentford. And you probably noticed that the game is almost over. And it is over. It's because it was a shit game. Nil-nil, nothing happened. I couldn't really pick out any more highlights. I honestly tried. You can see the stats there. Four shots on target for us, one for them. It was just an awful game. And like I said, I was trying to get rid of keepers. Urchett already gone. We received an offer for Juan Sariano from Nottingham Forest. They seem to be a club that buys all their players. No idea why. Uh, Colclough is one of them and now Soriano in the same season. Within a few weeks of each other... And the bid was accepted. I think it was around £800,000. And I was happy to sell Soriano. Because, let's face it, he's not that good. Harris will be better. And we don't really need three keepers. If we did, I can promote from the Youth Academy. But then, onto this game against Hull at the KCOM Stadium. And, yes, it is snowing. The first game you will see with snow. And probably the last in this season. Because I can't remember any other games having snow in them. But we got off to a cracking start. Good goal from Chaplin. And you can see there that we took the lead. Brilliant finish from Chaplin. Rushing forward. Keeper coming out at him. Lifted it over the keeper. And buried it into the bottom of the goal. So, cracking start for us there. And I was happy that we actually got the lead. Then we got the ball whipped in. I think it was Massey just missing the header there. So, we started off on the front foot. But with FIFA and especially against a team like Hull... You've got to be wary at the back, and luckily for us, Dunkley was. I think it was Dunkley, maybe Daniels. I can't remember that much, but it was a good slide tackle and a good block. But then you see that here, 
What a chance for Hull because of that ball from the keeper was fantastic. Good first hand pass into Campbell. Defending wasn't great, but for some reason he missed. I think it was Ryan Mason slid in, couldn't put the shot on target, a let off for us. And we were hoping to make Hull pay. Good shot from Massey. Saved well. I think it is Kernese's in goal. I could be wrong. I don't really know. And from the corner, we had a shot blocked. And then we had another shot after that. Boateng just flashing wide over the post. But it was a backwards and forwards type of game. We got taken out in the middle. The referee did not give us anything for it. Let the game carry on. And as you all know, if a game carries on after a bullshit foul, they will get a goal. And they did. Unlucky from Randolph. First day, and his first game, he kept a clean sheet against Brentford. This one, he went to save it, it hit the post and bounced off his back into the path of Grzycki, who is back from, I'm guessing, alone, because I can't imagine he's still at Hull in real life. And uh, yeah, he gets a goal for them. And we kept pushing forward, hoping to get ourselves a winner in this game. And Akin Femme, who came onto the pitch just after we conceded, gets the goal. And it is a good finish from the big man, the beast, as people call him. Just running on to it, a lovely one too in effect. And it's actually a good finish. First time right footed, not sure what I think it's Curtis Davis was doing though. But I wasn't too concerned. We were winning 2-1 and it was the last moments of the game we got that goal. So in the end it's a 2-1 win. Good after the Brentford game and their only shot on target went in. I mean that's FIFA for you. That is FIFA in a nutshell. But we got the win, that is all that matters and... Since we did change the sliders, one person has been just crap, and that was Charlie Wakefield. Now, this guy is actually on loan from Chelsea in real life, but as we all know, Chelsea loan out probably like three teams worth of players, three certain 11s anyway, and yeah, he's actually not with them, so we managed to uh, buy him, and then he just wasn't good enough. Maybe in the future we might look to bring him back, but for now, not good enough, and we agreed a deal to potentially sell him and uh, get a bit of money in. But then after that I decided let's change the formation because that Watford game, sorry, that Hull game and that Brentford game weren't good enough. They just didn't feel right and I thought we needed something a bit more up front. So I decided to go with a 4-2-2-2. So four defenders, two CDMs, a left mid, well a left winger and a right winger. And then two strikers, so Chaplin and Grigg up front. And to be honest it worked. For the first 30 minutes to maybe 35 minutes it was all us attacking. See, Jacobs had a chance here, cut him back, good save by the keeper, and then for some reason, we could not get the rebound in or even on target. And Watford's first chance really of the half came in the dying minutes of it. Poor defending from us, but at the same time, just good passing from them. And then a shot out of nowhere. And watch this again, just watch this save from Randolph. This is what we paid the money for, because from this angle... He's got plays in his way, and that is just a fingertip save over the bar. Cracking save from him, keeping us in this game just before half-time. But after that, it was all Watford, really. A lot of pressing, a lot of good passing, a lot of shit defending, to be honest. And they were 1-0 up. I think it was Richelison with the goal. Just You can see the defending here by Nathan Byrne. Just backs off too much, allows too much room, and in the end we pay for it by going down 1-0. Nothing Randolph could do about that one. I was still hopeful that we can get something from this game. Jacobs, however, was not. Giving the ball away very, very cheaply after they give away the ball cheaply. A cross came in, poor defending yet again in the box. And it was 2-0 to Watford. Nothing Randolph could do about either goal in my eyes. You see the uh, shot there. It's a lovely finish. Just first time right-footed. Cracking finish, but Acosta though, I don't know what he was doing. I, doesn't, I don't actually know what Daniels or the other defender were doing either. They were just there apparently, but not making anybody. And as many pundits say, space can't score goals. Players do, so make the player. We did manage, however, to get back in this game, but it was the 90th minute into extra time. Will Grigg with the goal. Good movement by Tablo, good shot. I think it was blocked in the end. And then uh, the follow-up, almost getting saved by our best friend, Costel Pantillimon. That guy, honestly. If you're going to get a keeper in FIFA, buy that guy. He's a fucking giant and saves everything but as you can see that goal from Grigg wasn't enough to get us back in the game we had maybe a couple of minutes to get a goal but yeah just not enough time in the end and you can see there from the stats probably deserved more from that game but didn't get anything but you know it happens you lose some games you're not going to win everything and you see here two people getting sold Soriano got sold first and then Wakefield 
also getting sold. So a bit of money coming in and also getting rid of a bit of dead wood. So that's all good. Money and getting rid of shit players. It's what you want to do. And then against Bristol City in the FA Cup, you can see playing against a side that has one of the greatest away kits in the world. I mean, just it's such a nice kit. It reminds me so much of Need for Speed Underground 2 and the Kerr at the start. That is what the kit is for me. That Kerr, beautiful Kerr, beautiful kit. But back on the actual game itself, you see here we have a very good chance and we actually take it. Chaplin up front McGrigg seemed to be in a bit of form. Like Them two together seem to link up well. We worked the ball well. A good little touch from him as well after the first pass. Got himself in and slotted it just to the right of the keeper. Maybe he could have done better. But in the end, it was 1-0 and, you know, we got our just reward for a good stir. And then they had a corner and they looked very dangerous from corners. We didn't have that much height in the box. Other than really people like Dan Byrne, but they had like three or four tall players for every one we had. So we were struggling quite a bit in the box. So Randolph made a save there. But from the second corner, nothing you can do about that. Well, maybe Merck a bit better, but just... He's open pretty much online with the front post and that finish is spectacular. Left footed volley first time whilst jumping to get it like past the keeper and above the defender. Fair play to him and uh, yeah, we was uh, very, uh, I wouldn't say unfortunate to concede but you know from a corner you don't like conceding from them and you know we could have done better but speaking of doing better from a attack from Bristol City we went on a counter attack very good this formation for counter attacking all front four players linking up well Van Bergen on the left Grigg and Chaplin up front and Massey on the right pass across them got the ball forward won a penalty and missed it because it's FIFA and for some reason FIFA 16 had amazing penalties they worked FIFA 17 decided we'll change that and then FIFA 18 decided we'll change it yet again but not fix it so yeah, you know that I don't like penalties on this game and yeah, in the end it could have cost us there because Bristol City almost went in front. A good passing from them and a very similar shot that they scored their first goal with. And Chaplin, a good bit of footwork to get past his man. The space was closing down. I decided to go for a shot. We didn't get lucky in the end and it was saved and out for a goal, uh, corner ball. Sorry, wow. And... Uh, a bit of a lack defending from us led to a chance from Bristol City and this is what the game turned into. Backwards and forwards, one attack after the other, they attacked, we attacked and it was a very close and entertaining match. It's either a shot saved by, I think it was Boateng who came on that left side and it was just a fun and a quality FA Cup match this one and we took the lead back through Jack Byrne. He was quite good in this match in that defensive position. Defended well, got the ball forward well, and he also finished well, because that is not an easy shot to make. First time, right footed, kept it low, and the keeper really had no chance. Could have moved his feet a bit quicker, but you can't blame him for that goal in the end. But from a corner, like I said, we looked very vulnerable, and Bristol City proved it yet again. Ball whipped in, and it's a good header this time. I think the defenders on him were probably like half a size and combined. You see it's Grigg and Massey. The striker, easy header, Randolph tried his very best, but couldn't get there in the end. And it was looking like it was going to go to a replay. But we thought, no, let's keep going, let's get a goal. And what a goal it was through Chaplin. The man was on fire for the first few games. Lovely flick inside. I mean, that flick is so, so clever. Just left-footed flick onto his right foot. And the finish is nothing to uh, shake a stick at either. I think people say that, shake a stick at it. Don't know what that saying is, but I'm going to use it. And in the end, it was a winning goal. 3-2 to us. Very, very good match. End-to-end -end game. Yeah, the stats show that we deserved to win that. But in the end, it was a close game. And whoever won that probably deserved it. And you see the news here. That Nick Powell will be leaving us. And that is because the release clause has been paid by Sunderland. If you remember a few episodes back, we had to give him a release clause. Because his contract was running out. We were going to lose him on a free. We had to give him something. And we did, and in the end it was Sunderland who uh, had to come over, like, come in and offer the release clause. And there you go, Nick Powell has been sold. We got a bit of money for it, which is fantastic, but losing one of your better players in-game is not a good feeling at all. In real life, Nick Powell, not a massive fan of him. He's good, yes, but he's he thinks he's better than he is, and that is not what you want at a football team who are fighting for the title in League One. 
yes, he'll come up with a lot of good goals, but in the end, you want a player who curves and wants to try every match. And with Pebble leaving, I thought, let's bring in Loftus Cheek to replace him. And you saw the money that fucking Hodgson, the owl bastard, was asking for. Well, too much. So we decided instead we'll just go with something else and try something new. And also Deeb Now, this guy is a bit of a weird one. Because you're thinking to yourself, why are you bringing in a 62 overall 22 year old central midfielder? And, you know, from the outside looking in at this screen and obviously the screen before, you're thinking, you're an idiot. Why bring in this guy? You don't really need him. But we did bring him in, and you'll see his stats. Look at them stats. Them physical stats are fucking awesome. He's got speed, acceleration, he's also got agility, he's also strong, and got good stamina. He is. A physically amazing player. Technically, he's a bit poor, but with training, he can easily get to a potentially like mid 70s player. And basically, people are calling him the poor man's Yaya Torre. And you know, after using him for a bit in this episode, I very much agree that with training, he will become a lot better. Then came into the game against QPR, and you can see we took the lead within the first 15 or so minutes. Very, very fortunate goal. The block there from the defender actually putting it into his own goal. You can see there, just put his foot out trying to block it, and the keeper's already diving. And there's nothing worse when you're a keeper than when you've actually made your mind up, you're diving one way, and then, you know, the player blocks it and it goes in your own net. It's horrible to fucking witness, and the keeper could do nothing about it. But our keeper did make a good save, Randolph there. Kind of set off a counter-attack after Dan Byrne. Didn't lump it out of play, we kept it. Kept their composure, played the ball forward, Chaplin, ball in to Grigg, had a shot, and yeah, we won a penalty from that. Now I'd be thinking to yourself, how, but the replay showed that when the player slid in, he did take out Grigg, no contact with the ball, and that has to be a penalty, and we scored. We scored a penalty. Don't ask me how, I really don't fucking know. It was more luck than anything else, but a good finish from Grigg after, you know, we've been a bit shaky from penalties, so... I'm happy he got the goal there. And then went off for another goal. This is all in the first half, by the way. Lovely ball in. And a great, great header by Will Grigg, who in this formation was looking a lot better. Up front on his own, he struggles a lot. And I think I've said this before, but in real life, he prefers to play on his own up front, yet he's not that good when he does it. Yet for some reason, when he plays with somebody up front with him on FIFA, he is fantastic and 10 times better. Somehow QPR did not get back into the game before half time because that shot from Silla was just awful in the end. And we had a chance to make it 4 0, and we did get the ball in the back of the net. However, it was offside. I think it was uh, Grigg again looking for his hat trick, getting the hat trick, but the linesman flags for offside, and you see the replay, and you probably saw it the first time around. It is a correct decision. Two players were offside for us. And it was a clear, clear decision to make from the linesman. But the game did end 3-0. All the action in the first half. I wasn't too concerned though. Because one, we kept a clean sheet. And two, we got three points. Even though the stats probably showed it was an even game. It really wasn't. QPR shots all came from range. We were very dominant in front of goal. But then, we decided to sign up some youth players. We needed a backup left back. And also a third or fourth choice striker. So in the end... We got Cameron Lee and also Harrison Mitchell. So them are two youngsters we'll hope to train up and play in quite a few games as well. Mainly the games that don't mean too much are coming on as subs later on. But against Glunthorpe, our League One rival, so to speak. A cracking block there from the defender. I think his name is Wally. And then from that, we managed to hit the crossbar with Donovan Daniels. Brilliant header, don't get me wrong. But yeah, just missing. And then Gilby gets fouled in the middle and, you know, the referee plays on. And I had a flashback, I believe it was, to the Hull match. Sorry, the uh, Watford match where we get fouled in the middle and the referee doesn't call. And in the end, we suffer from it because they get a goal. Randolph almost making the save, but it is lack and poor defending there. But in the end, it's, it's not a goal. It should not stand because of the foul. Cracking finish, by the way. I don't know how he did it. It's magic. But it was a foul on Gilbert in the middle of the pitch. Referee didn't call it and they got a goal from it. Went on a bit of an attack. And, you know, without Gilbert back defending, we were kind of screwed. But Greg, the man who is back on fire, proves it here in this match. Scoring against Jilks. Lovely bit of movement on the edge of the box. Got himself free and shot powerfully into that bottom right-hand corner. 
Nothing the former Wigan keeper could do about it. It was a brilliant finish. I think I actually hit the side net in first. So, you know, just a perfect goal from the man back on fire. Him and Chaplin up front or just on the pitch together seemed to work. Without him, Grigg is shit. And Chaplin on his own can do a job, but with Grigg, he does do a bit better. But from the kickoff, we defended relatively poorly. And yeah, the one mistake that Randolph has made so far is just a big one because if a player scores a header from just inside the box you've got questions to ask your keeper and don't get me wrong it's a great header but he just doesn't dive properly he just falls over if he moves his feet gets across his goal dives down he will easily save that and pick it up but he doesn't and it is too long to scunthorpe i was very pissed off at this point and uh, yeah kind of glad that i cut the uh, live commentary for this bit because i won't be able to include much of it a lot of it was swearing and random random words, to be honest. But in the end, we got our goal, and it was straight from our kickoff we got the goal. The last goal for them was straight from their kickoff, so, you know, kickoff glitch in full effect here. Lovely finish from Massey, don't get me wrong. It's a good finish, but I think we were helped a lot by the fact it was just from kickoff. But Scunthorpe kept going forward and got themselves a penalty. Or got themselves a penalty, should I say. And it wasn't a penalty. This is the most dodgy bullshit decision I've ever seen. I mean, was it Adam Smith at the weekend for Bournemouth? He got, um, you know, he got booked for a dive. It was the way he went down which made it he got booked for. That one was just a clear dive and the referee gave a penalty. So, no idea what the fuck the referee were doing there. If that commission was in this game, he would get banned for about three or four games. So, that, cause that was shocking. But luckily, justice was done and they missed a penalty. And even further justice was done when Chaplin finished off this chance here. Lovely first touch, and what a strike as well. Jilks really had no chance with all these goals. You see Chaplin here just hits it as hard as he can across goal. Across goal shots always seem to work for us. Chaplin getting one of them for himself. But the game will end at 3-2, all three points in the bag. And from this episode, we've played quite a few games. We've won 3-0 against QPR, we just beat Scunthorpe 3-2, beat Bristol City 3-2 in the Cup, did lose against Watford, a bit of a shame, but we beat Hull and we also drew against Brentford, so doing quite well, and then came the last game versus Sheffield Wednesday. Aside in real life that had that one good season and are kind of suffering for it now, but we had a shot here and it was blocked out for a corner, but it wasn't because the referee brought it back for a Chef Wednesday free kick. Don't worry, you're not the only one who doesn't know what the fuck went on. I was sat there scratching my head for a good few minutes, as to why that was given as a free kick and in some effect from that free kick they did get themselves in front good finish from the chef wednesday player just terrible defending from us yet again got to learn to defend better on this game that is my big aim a lot of times we get you know bullshit goals against us but a lot of times i've just got to defend better that is the honest truth from me there but then i was thinking to myself you know we started off very well we deserve to be in this game and Will Grigg like I said the man back on fire proving it yet again with a goal this time just lovely play on the outside of the box something we're not seeing from him for a long long time and you know he's got that power in his shot he has that epic thing about him where he can just hit the ball from anywhere just inside or just outside the box and it will find the top corner and went attacking yet again I should have really squared that chance was a good save and cleared off the line ish by the defender but if I squared it, it would have been 2-1. But we were attacking all game, just constant attacks. Just piling bodies forward. The formation working out really well. Got the ball with Chaplin, laid it into Van Bergen. A lovely flick inside from Chaplin and a lovely finish as well from Van Bergen. You watch it again. Good flick inside, reverse pass, kind of a no-look pass as well. And we get the goal from it in the end. Van Bergen... Yet again, just putting power on it, getting it up into the top corner of the goal. No chance for the keeper. And we made it 2-1 just before half time. And we kept the momentum going into the second half. Good bit of play here. A cracking ball through to Grigg. And what a first time finish that was. Left footed, in off the post. Good ball through to him. But just watch this finish. Keeper rushing out. He gets it over the keeper, in off the post. And like I said, just he's back on fire. He's back on form. With Chaplin up front with him, or somebody up front with him, he is amazing. And there you go, we get ourselves a good two-goal cushion. But we weren't finished yet, we wanted more goals. We kept going forward, kept attacking, 
Chaplin looking for his goal, couldn't get it, but Grigg on the rebound did get his hat-trick, and a well-deserved hat-trick at that. Good play from Chaplin, good shot, but that is not an easy finish from Will Grigg. Not an easy finish at all, because he's got a man in front of him, the keeper going back into goal, and at a tight angle, he gets a shot away, gets a goal, and makes it 4-1, and that is how the game would end a hat-trick for Grigg. A 4-1 win against Chef Wednesday, ending off the episode very well, and in a good bit of form since we changed the formation. I mean, yes, we lost against Watford with the new formation, but once we learned it, we went on to win four games in a row. So happy with our team performance. Once again, the stats showing that Chef Wendy deserved something from that match, but they didn't. They really didn't. They were shocking up front and defensively, and we got ourselves a 4 1 win from it. You can see the table here Watford are in second, we are in first. I think it's like a seven point gap. And there is a bottom of the table as well. You see Wimbledon down there, Bristol City down there, which I am surprised at. They were the best team we played this episode without a doubt. Maybe Watford up there as well, but Bristol City in the FA Cup were fantastic. You see there we get a transfer offer accepted for Robinson. I said we accepted a bid for him from Cardiff because he's one of them players that we signed and didn't really use that much. But when we did use him... He wasn't anything special, so I thought, let's get a bit of money for him now and use it to invest in a brilliant player in-game who can do great in the future. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin, in real life, I think he's a good player. Maybe not Premier League quality just yet. I think he needs time, maybe in the Championship or maybe at a lower club in the Premier League. Because let's face it, Everton deserve the top 10. So if he gets to like a club like West Ham at the moment like Swansea, and he can knock goals in, play every week, week in, week out, as that main striker, he will become eventually Premier League quality. But at the moment, I think he's just not there yet. But we decided, let's go in for him. We offered Bally Tablet, they said, no, no, we want a centre-back, and we had just sold one. I thought, you are sold. The timing on that is unreal. But we did offer Angus MacDonald and a bit of money, and they did accept. And yeah, this guy would cost a fair bit with his wages, which I was... You know, a bit annoyed about because, you know, I don't like spending that much money on wages. But I thought, let's face it, he's going to be at the club until we either sell him for a shit ton of money or until we do something amazing. So, he's worth the money and we did get Calvert-Lewin brought in. But, as we did bring in Calvert-Lewin, I did need a centre-back to replace Angus McDonald and also Robinson who had just been sold. So, we went to a loan in a player. Alfie Jones was our second choice. The first choice, Akinola from West Ham was on the loan list, but for some reason they didn't want to loan him out. Not a clue why, but we got in Alfie Jones, a good third or fourth choice centre-back. I mean, we still had Dan Byrne, we still had Daniels, don't clear also Sam Stubbs, so Alfie Jones coming in would be fourth choice, and he would play in that second team. And just a bit more backup, it backup, backup if we didn't need it. You see all the deals in the championship, nothing major going through. Ipswich maybe selling a bit too many players there. Leeds bringing in players, Middlesbrough selling Barrigan as well as Randolph. Randolph obviously coming to us, they got uh, to, to replace him, so fair play to them. Keeper for a keeper and a bit of money, it works. See, sorry, I know they're joining Nottingham Forest. A good signing from, I say for them, but hopefully he plays against us because we know his weaknesses. QPR bringing in Robinson, not sure which Robinson that was. See, Redding there bringing in a couple of players, well, a player, sorry, and... See, the rest of it wasn't amazing. Sunderland did sell quite a few players. Wabi Kajri, the main one there. And also Watford selling a lot of players. Dini going as well. Amrabat. You know, Dini is not a bad player. Championship quality, I think. And uh, bad for Watford selling him. But, you know, if you've got to sell players to make money, that's what you have to do. And that is what they did. So, then were all these championship deals. I did start with Bolton. I don't know why. I can't remember. I think it was because it was just there. And I assume Bolton were the first team incorrectly obviously but there you go now you see the major deals look for the date on the left side because you know them are the ones that happened this year so if you see 20, 2018 that is sorry 2019 at this point that is people who've been sold Brandt went to Valencia good purchase from them and you also see that Timo Werner went to Real Madrid yeah, Felipe Anderson joining Chelsea a bit of a weird signing from them good young right winger but you know could have done better, I suppose. And you will, from now on, see some really weird signings. And trust me, they get very, very, very weird indeed. And you've got Asenjo joining uh, so That's a good signing from them. See Quincy Promise, obviously, going all there. Then you see this. Briel Donald Mbolo, one of the promising players from Germany, joining Bournemouth. 
So random, 31 million pound as well, quite a big deal for them. Then you see uh, Chelsea, that was a signing from before. Then you see other deals going through as well, just random, random deals. Nani joining Juventus was one of them. I mean, Alex Vidal going to fucking Everton is random as fuck. You got uh, Dendonka, the replacement for Vidal, joining Bayern Munich from Anderlecht. And then this one here. Arjun Robin, the right winger, former Chelsea man, joining Arsenal for quite a bit of money at 35 years old from Bayern Munich. He joined Arsenal. Just the most random ever transfer. Not sure what the hell was going on there. See Dimitri Payet going to Napoli from Marseille, which I suppose is a good sign, but at the same time, he won't really play after his first season. To least get a player we know from previous FIFAs joining United. Quadrado went to Dortmund before, you know, big deals like that going through. But the biggest and more surprising one by far was Robin going to Arsenal. Just weird as fuck. You see all our deals here, just in case you did miss them. Robinson leaving, Calvert-Lewin joining, McDonald leaving. Jones in on loan, Ortodibe joining, Pebble leaving, Wakefield leaving, sorry, Herno leaving. Randolph joining, Archer going. So a lot of departures from this as well. Kelly leaving, obviously he left before. So did our former keeper Evans and so did Colclough. I mean, in the future might look to bring Colclough back. Maybe a Pebble as well. But then onto player of the month, it was a man on fire, Will Grigg. Brilliant games from him towards the end. Once we changed the formation, he got better and deserved player of the month. Sealing it with a hat-trick in that last game versus Sheffield Wednesday. However, goal of the month will go to Chaplin for that goal versus Bristol City. Won us the game in the cup. Lovely first touch, lovely finish. No doubt about it, that was goal of the month. That touch again, just so brilliant. Left foot onto his right, first time shot. Afterwards, in the back of the net. So, that's been episode 18. See you next time for episode 19 very soon. Goodbye.